Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel many, many times before. I've had some awesome beers from these guys over the years. They're one of the best known Swedish breweries. Uh, I've reviewed quite a few different styles from them, of course. One of my most reviewed breweries here on the channel, in fact, and they're known mainly for their New England hazy IPAs. So they're definitely worth checking out if you're interested in Swedish craft beer. And I always keep an eye on the new beers that they're releasing but uh, yeah it's one of those new releases we're going to have a look at today so for this review we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again Jutebori as you would say in Swedish the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing the Gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition these days and for this review we are going to return to Stigbjerget's bravery once again so this particular beer is called Fraktur it comes in at 8.5% ABV, and this one is another New England hazy imperial double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So, uh, yeah, the last beer that we had from these guys, the Fragments, I thought was very, very nice. Both of these beers, of course, were released as part of the Local Osmoska Lig Assortment through Systembolagic here in Sweden for June of 2021, and they've both been received very well from what I understand. I really enjoyed Fragments, so I have to say I'm very curious to see what Fractor is going to have in store for us. But yeah, yeah, I always keep an eye on the beers that Stieg Beriots are releasing and uh, it's always nice to try a few new things from these guys because they're pretty damn solid, I guess we have to say. But yeah, looking forward to trying this one. Hopefully it's another good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So let's crack on with this review then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Stieg Beriots Bravery before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Stiegberg's Bravery once again then so as I've mentioned to you already Stiegberg's Bravery are based in Gothenburg Jutebori as you would say in Swedish up there on the west coast and the company was founded by Niels Holdkrantz and Richard Simonsson so these guys own two bars that share the one kitchen this is the Bar Kino and the Haga Beyond's Cafe which are located on Linegatan in the city and both of these opened back in 2007. This building is actually an independent cinema and I didn't realise that until I actually went to visit it. If you're interested to see, you can check out my out and about video that I did. That was filmed back in about October of 2019, but it gives you an idea of what the place is like. I need to go back there the next time I'm in Gothenburg. These two places are the kind of unofficial tap rooms, if you like, of uh, OO Brewing and Stieg Beriots in Gothenburg. But uh, originally, the idea that these guys had was that they wanted to brew a few beers that they could sell in the bars, and this led to them kegging the beer and selling it to other pubs, and then eventually to bottling the beers, which began in November of 2014. But the original beers that they were producing were mainly English and German styles, but they really started to make their name when they began to focus on the more hoppy American styles of beer. So the original head brewer was Ole Anderson, who is one of the co-owners of OO Brewing. He stayed with the company until April of 2017, and he was the one who developed the GBG Beer Week beer for 2016 and also the uh, Amazing Haze as well. And those two are kind of two of the f what I would call the four cult classic Swedish New England IPAs. At the same time, he developed the, uh, the Narangi under his own brand, OO. So those are three Swedish beers that you really really need to check out. But um, after he left, he was replaced for a short period of time by Barnaby Struva, who was one of the three, uh, one of the vice presidents at Three Floyds in Münster, Indiana, over near Chicago in America. And uh, around that time as well, the brewery moved to Party Halarna in the city, where they were brewing 5,000 litre batches at a time. And they also began working on some sour beers there as well. If memory serves me correctly, I still need to try a sour beer from Stiegberries. I've not managed to, uh, to get a hold of one yet, actually. 
But uh, they started selling their beers in 440 milliliter cans at this stage too. And this means that they've been able to export their beers a lot more and build their name worldwide. And they've got a brew team now of Ollie Banks, who used to work for Beaver Town in London, and Lucas Munraid, who used to work for All In Brewing, one of the numerous gypsy breweries operating in the Gothenburg area. But as of summer 2020, they moved to another new brewery in Ringun, which is slightly smaller in terms of capacity from what I understand, but they're considering brewing some Lambic beer there too, which I think could be really interesting. But they're saying that they've got the possibility for a bar and swimming facilities there. They were talking about it being an experienced brewery on the article that, uh, or in the article that I read about. So um, yeah, that will be interesting to see. Maybe we can do an out and about video at uh, Steve Berriot's Bravery sometime, and it could be cool to do. Um, an interview with the guys from Steve Beards as well. That would be awesome. But they opened up a bar in Stockholm in April of 2020 and they also now have their own folk wool shop in Gothenburg as well. For those of you watching abroad, folk wool is anything that is 3.5% and below and that means that it can be sold legally in the supermarkets here in Sweden. But as of June 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 125 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. And as I mentioned to you, this brewery are known mainly for those New England hazy IPAs but you'll get quite a few different styles from these guys. In recent times, they've been releasing a good few different German laggers, which have been interesting to try. Um, they've also done like various uh, big dark beers as well, you know, Imperial Stouts and Barley Wines and stuff like this. Not too many Barley Wines actually, but the Barley Wine I did have from them was very, very nice actually. So um, yeah, definitely check those ones out if you uh, if you get the chance. But yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Stieg Berriot's Brewery for the moment. One of the best known Swedish craft breweries, as I've said. If you want to learn more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all those different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's crack on then and have a look at this beer itself. So, as you can see, the artwork on this one, it is kind of like it was with uh, with uh, fragments, I guess we could say, except it's a little bit more of, um, you know, it's a little bit more of a kind of mosaic-y type thing in this one. So I like that, you know, fracture is when the picture breaks, and then the fragments are when it breaks up into little pieces. So yeah, the higher ABV one is the fracture, and then the fragments are the, the smaller one. But yeah, the artwork, of course, on this is derived from their West Coast uh, IPA. That they have. I th is it still called that? I thought they might have changed the name of it. But um, yeah, the artwork on this is basically a, a kind of reimagining, if you like, of the artwork for their West Coast IPA. But uh, yeah, like we said, this one is a New England hazy double IPA coming in at 8.5% ABV. I've got an awful feeling that at the start of the video I said this beer was 8%, so if I did, I apologise for lying. But uh, yeah, this one is hopped with Idaho 7, Nelson Sovine and Mosaic. So yeah, Nelson Sovine and Mosaic, of course, both American hops. Sorry, Idaho 7 and Mosaic, yeah, both American. Nelson Sovine is from New Zealand. Uh, Idaho 7, about 14% alpha acid, lots of lovely soft tropical fruits in that. Beautiful hop, actually. Idaho 7 is becoming a quick favourite of mine. Uh, Mosaic, as we know quite well, has that lovely juicy tangerine note. Nelson Sovine, 16% alpha acid, absolute monster. The kind of cult classic New Zealand hop, actually. And that one gives you all these kind of gooseberry, uh, white green grapey notes. But uh, yeah, so 440 milliliter can this one. I think I paid 50 Swedish kroner for this, maybe 55. Let's say 55 just to be safe. So that translates to roughly five euros 50, five pounds sterling. And I guess somewhere in the region of, you know, about $6.25, $6.50 American for those of you watching over there. But um, yeah, this one I think should be really nice. Nice hot blend in it, 8.5% New England double IPA. Let's just go for it and see how we go. Yeah, there we are. So, let's have a look at this and see how we are. So, I'm wondering what this one is going to be like. I'm just going to check, because if I remember rightly, if I'm remembering the breweries correctly, the last one had a little bit of rye in it or something like that. Um, yeah, this one's got a bit of rye in it as well, actually. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the one thing I noticed about the fragments was that it came across as a little bit more grainy and I picked that up right, you know, as soon as I had the beer on my tongue and then I was like, oh, it's grainy and then I checked the ingredients and it said rye, so it makes sense. So yeah, this one has a little bit of rye in it as well. And uh, you don't often, I mean, some breweries do. It's a bit, I think it's a bit more common to use rye in New England hazy IPAs in America than it is in Europe. Um, Alchemist would be the brewery that I would be thinking about there. 
Um, because obviously the most of the New England IPAs we get in Europe are a little bit more akin to the likes of Trillium, which are the more wheaty, bitey ones, and Treehouse, which are the more kind of oaty, creamy ones. It's not that often that you get a slightly more grainy um, New England IPA over here. You do get a few more kind of farmhousey ones, at least in Sweden, such as with uh, Stockholm Brewing Company and things. But yeah, that's just a point to uh, bear in mind. So yeah, um, and before the head disappears on this one, you can see that it's poured with a lovely... Um, one somewhere between a one third and a one half finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head there. That's fading away to be a very nice thin foamy layer just now. Um, you can see though it's leaving a thicker ring around the edge of the glass there, but um, it looks very, very nice, I have to say. So one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall it looks great. So in terms of the, um, in terms of the color of this beer, it's a very, rich um, it's quite a deep yellow this one so it, it comes across as a little bit like a sort of mixed um, it comes across as a little bit like a sort of mixed tropical fruit juice which um, I quite like but lean you know maybe like a mango and pineapple or something like this or a mango and peach I always like comparing these New England IPAs to different fruit juices because that's just what the appearances of these beers uh, remind me of but remember the color of your beer depends on one the type of malts that you use this determines the magnitude of the color two the length of your wort boil the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize and thus you get a darker color of beer a New England IPA like this is going to undergo a wort boil of somewhere in the region of, um, you know, it'll be somewhere, it'll be somewhere in the region of like 70 to 90 minutes. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, but then also any adjuncts and barrel aging are going to affect the colour of the beer as well. But those two factors are not at play in, um, in this particular beer. So um, yeah, it certainly looks the part of a New England um, hazy, whatever you want to call it. IPA of any description, Imperial, Pale, or just single IPA, whatever. But yeah, the level of haze on this one, I have to say, is pretty impressive. This is one of the superior and gloopier ones I've come across from Stieg Berriots in recent times, if memory serves me correctly. And the level of haze you get in these beers is determined by the wheat and the oat content along with the yeast. And that can vary from brewery to brewery and even recipe to recipe. But yeah, one of the superior and gloopier New England IPAs I've seen from Stieg Berriots over the last little while. But yeah, I think that's all we need to say about the appearance of this one. It looks great. So let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this beer. Yeah, that's very, very nice. Now, the one thing I noticed about the, the fragments, as I said, um, the fragments, you couldn't really pick up the rye notes in the, in the malt base, um, at least in the aroma, at least in my opinion. Um, and they came out more in the flavour, and it's the same with this one actually. I don't get too much of the rye in there, maybe just a little tiny hint, but that could be the power of suggestion because I know it's there. Um, maybe should have left looking at the can to see if there was rye in this one until a little bit later on, but um, yeah. So let's try and break down the aroma of this beer, but I'm going to say straight away this one comes across as a big sort of oily, fruity and, and kind of smooth bready um, New England IPA. So I really like how this one, how this beer goes about its business. It gets, you know, on the aroma, it gets a big thumbs up from me. But yeah, backbone of this beer then. So you can smell a nice sort of uh, bready backbone to this one. You do get a mix of a, a white bread and a little bit of a kind of wholemealy brown bread in there, which is interesting. A few bread crusty elements. Um, you can certainly smell the wheat on this beer as well. You do get a little bit of bitiness at the back of the nose and you can smell that kind of smooth wheaty layer as well at the same time. So yeah, white, uh, crisp sort of soft white bread in there, a little bit of, um, you know, crisp white bread in there, a little bit of a sort of soft um, kind of brown bready quality, a wee bit of bread crust then that smooth wheat layer on top. Um, you can also get a nice big kind of creamy oaty character coming out of this one, which I think is great. Um, yeah. Yeah, the big oaty creamy note that you get out of this is, 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 is pretty nice. This beer definitely just, it kind of smells like a, just a big brother version of the um, of the fragments, which I think of course it is actually, but I think the hops might have been a bit different in that if I remember rightly. But um, yeah, the aroma that you get off of this one, on the malt base at least, is very similar, but just kind of amped up, I think. Um, but yeah, big, juicy, kind of creamy, oaty qualities coming out of this one. I don't think juicy is the right word, but yeah, big, kind of thick, oaty, creamy notes out of this one. You do get a very nice, um, how do we say, you get a nice kind of um, 
sort of you get a little bit of that kind of Werther's original kind of butter candy brown sugary sort of thing coming out of the beer too which is great you can smell a little bit of that and that of course will be the booziness at 8.5 percent this beer will have a little bit of a boozy hit to it which is uh, which is great but yeah i think that covers the kind of malty part of this beer uh, quite succinctly to be honest with you that's what's going on with the the malty and yeasty side of things so yeah very layered but it comes across as very as very nice but on the uh, hoppy side of the beer then definitely a little touch of earthiness out of the green component of this one that'll be mosaic that's given you that but you also get a nice big bright green component to this one you can smell some really deep floral aromaticity to the beer it's also got a wee touch of spiciness to it and quite a zesty kind of green characteristic on the front of the nose too which is um which is great. So um, yeah, the the green component for me on this one, very bright, very zesty, and a good little bit spicy. So I like how it goes together. So um, yeah, the fruity side of um, the fruity side of this beer as well kind of goes together with it really nicely. But the green component for me mainly quite big and quite floral, and that's something we've come to expect from steep beers over the last little while. But let's look at the fruity side of things to round off the aroma. So. Yeah, this is very, very nice. So at the back and underneath everything else, you can smell that Idaho 7 note there. So you get a wee touch of a passion fruity pungency. You get a big sort of juicy oily mango in there. There's a little bit of a kind of apricot-y thing as well, which I think is uh, great. I mean, Nelson's, uh, sorry, Idaho 7 gives you all these very soft tropical notes. So you're getting little hints of like, you know, pineapple, papaya, apricot in there, an oily mango, and then a big kind of thicker passion fruity note out of it. So... I do like how that um I do like how that goes together. So yeah. Um yeah, the aroma uh, coming out of this one is um on the fruity side of things is very nice. I like that slightly tropical backbone that the beer has. But you can also smell the slightly more oily, gooseberry, white green grapey character from the Nelson Sovine in here, which I think is great. So I really like how that uh, I like how that pieces together in this beer which is um which is awesome so you can smell that just more oily thing in there but you also get that lighter juicy kind of tangerine from the uh, the mosaic on this one um it comes across the fruity side of this beer it's really well balanced i think overall everything comes across as being a little bit oily but the tropical fruits have a little bit of a lighter kind of juicy characteristic to them so yeah i do like how um i do like how all of this goes together so um yeah the um the fruity side of things is um is really nice in this one so yeah big oily juicy fruity leaning new england ipa this it smells lovely a bit the hops all kind of showing themselves off nicely those big oily and still soft tropical fruity notes of the idol seven the big kind of green gooseberry you know gooseberry white green grapey sort of thing from the nelson sovine then a lovely brighter juicy tangerine from the mosaic as well all of these hops showing themselves off quite nicely then so let's get the rest of this out into the glass and i think it's about time that we taste this beer then i think this one is going to be pretty damn nice so let's have a go at it this one is the Fracture, an 8.5% New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, Imperial Double IPA from Stiegberg's Brewery in Ringen in Gothenburg up on the Swedish West Coast. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skull, cheers. Ooh. That is pretty damn nice, I have to say. Um, first impression of it is, it's a very, very smooth beer, this one. You're going to notice that right away. It's got a big, smooth, kind of creamy element to it. And it's got the big, juicy, kind of fruity, oily things that we were expecting, to be honest. Um, but this is a lovely, lovely beer, this one. It's not the bitiest of uh, Stieg Beirut's beers that we've had before. It's definitely leaning more towards some of the other smoother ones that we've had in previous videos. But... Um, yeah, this is pretty damn solid, I have to say. So thumbs up to uh, to Steve Berrios Brewery for this one. So, um, yeah, where do we start with um, where do we start with this one? Um, yeah, <laughs> this is this is pretty damn solid. This is probably one of the best IPAs I've had 
from Steve Berry's in a little while. And that's not to say that any of the other ones weren't good, because they were. But, you know, every so often you just get beers that kind of strike you. Um, and I think this one is pretty damn solid. It comes, this one, I like this a little bit better than the Fragments. And the Fragments was a lot more lighter and kind of juicy in a sense. So I can appreciate that. But I really like how the, um, how this beer goes about its business. Um, it's, you know, you just get beers. Beer is subjective. Different people like different things. And this is one, as I say, that just kind of clicks with me. So, yeah, lovely stuff. So, um, yeah, in terms of the multi side of things, then we'll go through this beer and start off on the, the kind of multi side of things. The first impression, as I say, of this beer is a big, creamy, smooth, and oily, fruity thing, this. But yeah, let's go through the beer methodically as we always do. So, straight away with this one, you can feel that nice sort of smooth, bready backbone just going right across the middle of your palate. You will notice, as I suspected we would, you will notice that kind of um, rye, sort of brown bready, rye bready sort of thing. The, the backbone, the bready backbone of this beer does feel a little bit kind of more grainy. Um, just in that, you know, just in that base of the beer. And then on top of that, you start to get some of the kind of smoother white bread. And either end of that middle third of your palate, you get a wee bit of a bread crust in there. So as I've told you previously, there's six different directions I think you can take a New England IPA. They can be sort of yeasty and farmhousey, uh, rye leaning and sort of more grainy. They can be wheaty and bitey, oaty and creamy. They can be a little bit more barley malt leaning and bready in a sense. And then they can also be a wee bit more kind of uh, brown sugar leaning. And quite often these beers will display multiple characteristics. So this one is a big oaty, creamy and sort of brown sugary sweet type thing. But it's got a wee bit of rye in it. And I think that adds a little bit of um, complexity into the beer. But it's very, very nicely done, as we've said. Lovely malt base. But sitting on top of that kind of more barley malt crisp white bready layer, you can feel a little bit of the wheat sitting in there and just thickening up that bready layer and on top of that of course you start to get the thicker kind of oaty sort of thing out of it. It's a very layered flavour this. I find quite a lot of beers obviously are layered but it could just be my sort of way of interpreting the flavour if you like but uh, yeah. So it's lovely that. It really is very very nice. Um, but the thing that's interesting with the oaty layer with this, so the oaty layer you can feel if you go down the middle line of your palate, it's very, very thick and you can just feel the oats spreading out towards the edge of the palate there, which I think is um, is very, very nice. And on top of that, you get like a little oval and that's where the, um, you know, the Werther's original butter candy sort of things um, kind of push their way. Uh, kind of push their way out of the beer. So yeah, this beer does have a little bit of that kind of oily um, butter candy sort of thing. Then um, there's probably, going by the colour of this beer, because it is a slightly deeper yellow, it's probably got a slightly more kind of brown, um, sugary orientated malt in it. This one, like a little bit of Cara Munich or a bit of Cara Pils or something like that. I do wonder if it's Cara Pils actually, we'll come to why in a little minute. But um, yeah, there is a wee bit of that kind of butter candy Werther's original sort of thing. And if you go into the very dead centre of your palate, you get a nice kind of concentrated uh, caramelly note out of this one, which I think is great. So yeah, that oily um, caramelly note that comes out of this one, um, the oily caramelly note that comes out of this beer, I think is um, is really very nice as well. And um, this one, it's interesting, you do get a little touch of a biscuity note with this one. You can feel as you move out towards the extremities of that middle third of your palate that it's got a little bit of, um, you, that it's, you know, you can feel that it's got a little bit of that kind of more biscuity um, kind of quality to it, which I think is great. But um, yeah, it goes together really nicely in that sense. And the further you go into the aftertaste, it's got a little bit of, um, the, the further it goes into the aftertaste, it's got a little bit of um, a kind of more grainy, bready sort of thing to it. So yeah, you get a bit more of the rye bread out of this one, which I think is nice. So this beer, you know, it's got the quality of Stieg Berries, but it's, it has a completely different vibe to it compared to some of the other ones. I think it's got the big creaminess, which we can be, which you will get from certain uh, double IPAs with Stieg Berries, but the sort of rye characters that this beer has in the, in the backbone are the unique things. But I think, in honesty, um, 
it's um, this is very nice. I'd be curious to see them follow this route a little bit more. But yeah, as I was saying a minute ago, I suspect there's a wee touch of Pilsner malt in this one. The reason that I say this, you know, you get a little bit of those kind of biscuity malts coming out of the beer, but as you go from the dead centre of your palate towards the the back of that middle third of your tongue, you can feel there's a wee bit of crispness to the beer, and that I think is one of the traits of a uh, you know Pilsner malt. I think there might be a little touch of Pilsner malt in the uh, in the malt base of this one but yeah let's focus on the back third of your palate i think we've said everything we need to say about that middle third of your palate so yeah border region between front third and middle third of your palate you can feel a little bit of a bready build up there once again which is great so you can feel that but um yeah the the the, the fruity um the fruity side of this beer becomes really juicy later on as well but like i say you get a nice um you can feel that sort of bready build up in there, which is great. Um, and underneath that, you know, underneath this, you can feel that nice kind of smooth, um, pardon me, you can feel the sort of smoother white bready notes and also a little bit of that kind of rye, grainy sort of thing in there as well. But on top of that back third of the palate, you're getting a nice kind of taller yeasty component to the beer so you can see that you can feel that coming out there so you get these nice airy bready kind of things there and when you start from the back of the palate you can feel that as you go further forward the flavour starts quite tall and then it just condenses down and as you go into that middle third of your palate it's a little bit more squashed together and nice and smooth and um, yeah that I think covers the yeasty and malty side of this beer it works very very well but yeah on the um on the back corners of the um, on the back corners of the palate in this beer, you get a nice little bit. Um, you you get a nice little bit of an earthiness out of this one, um, so you can feel that nice little bit of earthiness there. It's a wee bit of a kind of um, mosaic type. Uh, you know, you can feel that mosaic earthiness coming out of this one. Mosaic has this very slightly distinctive earthiness to it, which is interesting. But as you move further forward from that on the green component, you can feel it's a little touch herbal, but as you reach the kind of front corners of your palate, it really gets a little bit more kind of floral and um, and aromatic, but it's not too spicy or too bitey or anything. It's more like a nice deep floral aromaticity that you get out of this one. Remember that New England IPAs are dependent on later addition hops. Early addition hops are the ones that are going to give you bitterness during the wort boil. You've got a trade-off over the course of the wort boil where the beer will start to, um, you know, where you get more flavour and aroma things out of this. West Coast IPAs, of course, um, have a lot more early edition hops than New England's do, and both uh, sub-styles, if you like, uh, take advantage of late edition and uh, dry hopping, of course, too. So, yeah, bear that in mind. So that's the reason this beer doesn't come across as overly kind of spicy and, and things in the green side of things. But I like the green component that it has, definitely. So, um, around the front curve of the palate as well, you get a nice little bit of a lighter, kind of grassy sort of thing coming out of this beer, and it's got a wee touch of zestiness to it as well, which I uh, which I can really enjoy. But yeah, the green component for me, it's got quite a deep and slightly and very bright floral aromaticity to it. So it gets a big, um, it gets a big thumbs up from me in that sense. I like how it goes to, uh, I do like how it goes together. So thumbs up, um, from me. But uh, yeah, I like that for sure. On the uh, front third of your palate then, you get that, that's where you get the kind of fruity element coming out of the beer. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up and a wee bit of bread crust in there. Then the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit kind of, um, there's a smooth kind of white bready note in there, a little bit of a kind of rye bready kind of thing. And then there was a wee bit, you do get a bit of that sort of smoother wheaty kind of thing. And it feels like the, the smooth wheat is the base of that uh, that front third of your palate but on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer so at the very back of that front third of your palate you get a nice kind of um how would we say you get a little bit of a more pungent uh, passion fruity note there that's going to come from the idaho seven but as you move further forward from that it really mellows out and gives you a big sort of oily mango and as you reach the middle of that front third of your palate this is where you're getting those you know lighter notes that you often associate with idol seven there's a wee bit of apricot in there i want to say there's maybe a little bit of peach in this beer as well it feels like it's got a little bit of a kind of brighter peach or maybe like a slightly green guava kind of thing there's a little bit of something like that going on in the um in the the back half of that front third of your palate so the the, the tropical fru fruits in this beer have a little bit of a kind of brighter quality to them i think 
Um, so yeah, a bit of passion fruit, like I say, a bit of mango sitting on top of that, maybe something that's a little bit kind of peach or a little bit guava-like, but as you move into the the kind of um, dead centre of that front third of your tongue, there's a few you know, apricotty, pineapple-y sort of things going on with this beer. But when you move into the front half of the front third of your tongue, that's when you're getting the more oily characteristics. So you can definitely feel that typical sort of gooseberry, green, white, green, grapey sort of thing from the Nelson Sauvine, that's sitting in there really nicely. On top of that, of course, as well, you're getting a, um, you're getting the, the, the kind of tangerine um, you know, those tangerine orangey notes from the mosaic too. But I think the further you go into the aftertaste, I think it's actually the tropical side of the beer that pushes its way out a little bit more. But some of those more oily notes from the Nelson Sauvignon and the mosaic do linger in there. So it's quite an interesting beer in terms of how that fruity side of things comes out. I think Idaho 7 is showing its off, itself off quite nicely in this one and giving you some really bright tropical notes. So yeah. So yeah, I do like this. And the thing is, the more you drink of it, the fruit's kind of wetting up a little bit as well, which is uh, which is great. But yeah, this is a solid, solid um, New England double IP from Stieg Berets, And this is what we've become accustomed to from them over the years. But let's round off the review with the mouthfeel then. So yeah, this one is top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of full-bodied, smooth carbonation. Um, you know, it's got a good balance between being oily and creamy, this one. This is quite an interesting IPA in terms of the, the mouthfeel. So some, it's got a balance between being very oily uh, and very creamy and thick in a sense. So I really like how the beer goes about its business from that perspective. On the hoppy bitterness side of things, what can we say about this one? Um, on the hoppy bitterness side of things... Um, I think this one's quite a low IBU beer, this one. I think it's, you know, I think this is a standard kind of 30 IBUs or something like that, which is kind of surprising for a, for a double IPA, of course, because normally you'd expect it just to have a little touch more, you know, like a 40 IBU kind of thing. So that's an interesting point to make about this beer in particular. But um, yeah, I think it works. So yeah, nice, bright kind of floral component to this beer, I would say. But yeah, um, I think about 30 IBUs, I think it's fairly standard this one. The malt base, as we said, there's a little bit of graininess underneath, but a lot of smoothness and a thickness in there and a little touch of um, of sweetness, which I really like. And then um, on top of that, you have, um, on top of that, you've just got, as I say, a little touch of a kind of brown sugary sweetness and then the fruity side of things in this beer. Um, it starts off quite oily in a sense, but then it juices up a little bit the um, the further up it moistens up, the fruity side of this beer moistens up a little bit the further that you go into the uh, the aftertaste with it. So yeah, thumbs up to um, Stieg Berriot's Bravery for this one. I think it uh, I think it works out really nicely, actually, uh, the, the whole composition of this beer. This is one of these beers where everything just fits together very, very well, so it gets my approval for sure. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this review. Um, taking a little bit longer, but I think there's a few good things to think about with this beer. But yeah, this is awesome and you should try it if you get the chance. Just a shame I'm reviewing it so late in the month, to be honest with you. It took them longer to get my order to me, which was quite frustrating. But um, yeah, this one was the Fractor, an 8% uh, New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Little bit of rye in this one, so a wee bit different compared to what we've had from Steve Barrett's before, but beautiful, beautiful beer. And I would highly recommend that you check this out. So yeah, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Stieg Berriot's Bravery. And we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future. Let's see what we'll get from Stieg Berriot's next month. Slange it, skull, cheers, and see you guys in the next review.